it's food for thought. Gorsh, a whole wheat sandwich. Now that's a great idea. With foods and nutrition teacher, Sandy Stratton. Hi there, and welcome back to Stone Park Intermediate School, and this is Food for Thought. You know, I've been thinking about what I'm going to have to eat today, and uh, I'm thinking maybe it's going to be one of these items here. Well, I'm kind of looking at them, and I'm wondering whether they're going to be good for me or not. Well, the only way to really tell that is by looking at the nutrition label. And today we're going to talk about nutrition labels. But you know what? You know what? I'm afraid. I'm very scared. I'm frightened to look at these nutrition labels. Why? Because of the words that are on them. They're very hard to read. Just have a look. Potassium, carbohydrates, I don't know what all that means. Those words are difficult to read. And, and there's math on it as well. Percentages and numbers. But you know what? I'm going to show you that it is easy to read nutrition labels. And we shouldn't be afraid of them. A lot of adults and a lot of students are scared off from reading them because of the language and because there seems to be math on them. But today we'll look at a few tricks on how to read a nutrition label so you'll know whether there's maybe too much salt or too much fat in the foods that you're about to eat. And by the way, I've been looking at this kind of food and you know what? I can't find a nutrition label on any of this food. Nowhere. So how do I know that it's... Well, of course, it's good for me this is whole food, and whole food doesn't require a nutrition label. Yes, all whole food is good for you just because it is whole food. So we don't have to worry about that. So it's important to eat as much whole food as possible in your diet. But if you are wondering about processed foods and whether they're good for you, we will be looking at nutrition labels today. Nutrition fact tables are of a standard rectangular size found on all packaged goods. Companies must include a nutrition fact label on their product as per government regulations. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency hopes that Canadians will read these labels and make a more informed choice about the food that they eat. The first thing we want to find on a nutrition fact table is the serving size. It will be located at the very top of the table. It is very important to find the serving size first because the information in the table is based on this serving size and no more. For instance, the information about a sugary cereal may be for a serving size of only three quarters of a cup, or maybe a salty bag of chips, the serving size might be for only 16 of those chips eaten. Or the serving size for a large fruit drink might be for only one small cup of that juice. If you eat or drink more than the serving size of any of those products, then you're going to have to adjust the amounts in the table accordingly. A sugary cereal that has a serving size of three quarters of a cup may have 10 grams of sugar in it. But in reality, when you eat a bowl of that cereal, you're actually eating more than 40 grams of sugar. The next thing we're going to look for on a nutrition fact label are the calories. Yes, we've all heard of the word calories before, but what are calories? Well, that's simple. Calories are a measure of energy that's in food. Calories are in all foods, except water. Yes, calories are a measure of heat energy in food. And without calories, we wouldn't have the energy to live and to talk and to walk and to play and to run. 
and do all those things we do in our daily lives. But how many calories should I eat per day? Is there a limit to how many calories I should have? Well, on an average, adults should have approximately 2,000 calories per day. That's all depending on your age and gender and body type. But the number 2,000 is generally used as a good average number of calories adults should eat per day. But be careful not to eat too many calories each day. You see, if you eat 2,000 calories, you'll have to work off 2,000 calories in energy to maintain your desired weight. Now let's look at our nutrition fact table for the word fat. Fat sounds like a four-letter word. But fat is an essential part of a human diet, so it's important to include good fats in your diet every day. The average 2,000 calorie diet should have between 40 and 65 grams of fat per day. I like to try and remember not to have any more than 50 grams of fat each day. That may be hard to track, but Packaged foods show fats in grams per serving, so you can use this as your guide. But once again, you'll have to measure your intake of fats accordingly if you eat more than the serving shown on each nutrition fact table. Probably more importantly is the type of fat you eat. So let's use the nutrition fact table again to consider what kinds of fat we are eating. Look under the word fat in the table. We should consume some fats in moderation. Saturated fats, for instance, are found in full-fat dairy products and meat, and they should account for no more than 20 grams each day in your diet. Look for saturated fats on the label and eat these with discretion. Your intake of trans fats, which is found in processed foods made with Partially hydrogenated oils should be close to zero. Even if trans fats are not listed in the table, make sure the words partially hydrogenated are not in the ingredient list to make sure you are not eating any trans fats. High intakes of these types of fats can increase your cholesterol levels and raise your risk of heart disease. The main sources of your dietary fat should be in oils, nuts, seeds, and fatty fish. The Canadian Food Guide recommends a small amount, about 2 to 3 tablespoons, of unsaturated fat each day. Eating unsaturated fat instead of saturated or trans fats can help lower your cholesterol levels and decrease your risk of heart disease. Next, we'll look at sodium, which is the scientific word for salt. Salt is another nutrient found in many foods. Our bodies need a small amount of sodium to be healthy. But on average, Canadians are consuming too much sodium without understanding the risk to their health. Canadians should lower their sodium intakes as part of maintaining a healthy lifestyle and to reduce the risk of high blood pressure, stroke, and heart and kidney disease. It is recommended that people eat between 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. People aged 14 and over should not eat more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day, though. This is referred to as the tolerable upper intake level. A sodium intake above 2,300 milligrams per day is likely to pose a health risk. So look at your nutrition fact table and don't forget to adjust according to the serving size to see how much salt might be in your favorite snack and takeout foods. Are you eating more than the recommended amount? Now we come to one of the biggest words on our label, carbohydrates, which are our body's main source of energy or calories. There are basically two types of carbs for short, simple and complex. 
While there is no need to eliminate either completely, you most definitely want to limit your intake of simple carbs and get most of your carb intake from complex carbohydrates as they contain healthy nutrients and fiber, which you can never get too much of in your diet. Simple carbs contain very little nutrients and fiber, just calories from sugar and nothing else. Examples of simple carbs include white breads and white rice and chips and cookies and candy, soda pop, and pretty much every type of junk food you can think of. Some complex carbs include oatmeal foods and beans and whole wheat bread, brown rice, sweet potatoes, and most other fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Listed directly below total carbohydrates are two other nutrition facts, dietary fiber and sugars. If a food has a good amount of fiber, it's most likely a good complex carb. If it has a good amount of sugar and no fiber, it's most likely a bad-for-you simple carb food. Try to keep your total sugars down to 30 grams per day as too much sugar can cause an increase in weight gain, can cause sleep troubles, cravings to eat more food, and can also stress the liver. The final area that I want to talk about on a nutrition fact label is at the very bottom in its own little section, and this is where we find vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals make people's bodies work properly. Vitamins and minerals boost the immune system. They support normal growth and development and help cells and organs do their jobs. Although you get vitamins and minerals from the food you eat every day, some foods have more vitamins and minerals than others. It's important to look at the packaged food you're about to eat and check out how much there is of each vitamin and mineral in that package. If it says there is 0% daily value, that means they cannot guarantee you will get that vitamin or mineral when eating that food. So eat prepackaged foods that have a good amount in the percent daily value of any vitamin or mineral that you may be wanting in your diet. And remember, the easiest way to get your vitamins and minerals is to eat whole foods because they naturally have these vitamins and minerals that our bodies need so much. Yes, honey, I'll be picking up bread and milk. Yes, whole wheat, oh yes, always whole wheat. Don't worry about, uh, one second, honey, I'm in the middle of a show. Hi there again, and uh, yes, as you can see, nutrition labels aren't really that difficult to read. And uh, if I look at this one, I can see that uh, sugar, sugar is uh, third on the list, so I think that I'll only have that cereal every once in a while because it is a treat cereal with that much sugar. I'll, when I do have it, I'll put some bananas and uh, berries on it or something like that. But anyway, uh, good to see you and we'll see you next time on Food for Thought. And just remember what the doctor said, an apple a day will keep you uh, healthy and wise and smart. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> oh. Uh. I forgot it was a prop apple. Uh, I'll stick to my uh, clementine. See you later.